Alrighty, we're back with part two now. So um, let's talk about materials before we get into it. So as you see here, I have my completely dry uh, outline of my skull that we made in part one. So you'll need this. You also need a pair of scissors, a paintbrush and a little top to put your Mod Podge in. We're gonna continue using this as our main um, adhesive. If you want to grab some painter's tape, that could be helpful. Um, we are going to continue using our paper clips as our uh, scaffolding material to hold um, our paper together as we build. However, there might be some instances where we cannot quite get a, a paper clip into a certain spot. So um, using a painter's tape can be helpful. Now let's talk about paper. So this is a face, right? So it's up to you what kind of color you want your skin to be. Um, I recommend whatever color you choose to get a variation around that color um, with paper. Um, our skins have lots of different colors and shades in them, so your um, sculpture should too. So I'm aiming for a sculpture that is a bit more connected to my own skin color, right? So I'm going with tans and warm browns. So um, to just touch base on all of these papers, I have tissue paper here. So I have a nice trans pa translucent papers. We have one here, we have one here that's also transparent. Um, other transparent papers, I have a Bristol, a, oh, sorry, not a Bristol. I have a vellum that I used um, for my last lantern project. And then for my opaque papers, I have this nice uh, kind of coppery gold paper that has a really fun imprinting to it. So I'm gonna use that. I really like using paper with a texture um, to create like more body in the face. And what's great about it too is you can kind of morph it and you can kind of do some imprints in it as well. Um, I like to make them flatten them a bit if you can. But what's great about this paper is it has really the ability to, you can really sculpt with it. You can really get um, rounded edges and it can feel more three dimensional. So that's why I like to use these kinds of papers. I'm gonna play around with some golds. I like throwing in some metallics into my on uh, my work. I have um, a, uh, a thicker paper here that's kind of like a tissue paper. I guess it's more like a cray paper. Um, it's not, it doesn't give you the full stretch like a cray paper does, but um, it's very strong. Um, I also have just a regular brown piece of uh, color construction paper here. And lastly, I have a piece of recycled paper back here, which is um, just a piece of um, brown craft paper. Um, so I like to use all of those. All of these papers have different um, strengths to them, um, and I'll be using them in different areas of my face. So it's good to have a fairly large variety of paper options to work with, okay? So I'm gonna put this to the side, and before we get into it, you wanna remove your paper clips. Okay, so I'll remove my paper clips and we will get to work. All right, so I have all my paper clips removed now. Um, you wanna set up your space. So I have my Maj Podge already ready for me. I have my paper clips out and I have a couple of uh, pieces of blue tape ready for me, just in case if I need it. I don't wanna have to uh, balance and hold things and try to rip tape, so it's good to just have them ready. So, um, I showed you a lot of papers just a second ago. Um, of course, you'll need your scissors too. Um, and it is nice to build, kind of, I build from the jaw up as I'm building. And it is also nice um, as you're building, I may use this uh, Mod Podge container so I have a, a something for my face to rest on. So you might wanna find something like a jar of some sort for your head to rest on as you are working, um, just so you have a surface 
um, to move it around on. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with one of my thicker papers. So that is my construction paper here. I've cut a rectangle out of it. And I think it's always important to fold your paper in half so you have two of them. All right, you don't want to make more work for yourself. So always <laughs> fold your paper in half so you have two of everything. And it's up to you. Some folks, uh, um, it might be nice to be a little bit more precise as you're working, so you might want to grab a pencil. Um, I will grab one myself. So I'm going, taking my paper, and it's going from the end of my, to the tip of my chin, to the edge of my jaw here. I am drawing out a shape to fit that space. Okay. So now I'm going to cut that shape out. So if you are using a paper that might have a pattern on one side and not the other, this technique may not work for you. But if you are working with solid pieces of paper, this is great for you to install your pages um, this way by always having, well, always cutting them into two. So what I'm going to do to install this piece here is um, I always add to the structure. So it's good to add your glue to your skull here. And then I'm going to install this here. So um, for your first piece, it's probably gonna be fairly easy for you to add a paper clip to. Um, and as we continue to build, it might get a little more difficult to add paper clips, and then that's when we'll start transitioning into blue tape. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. one here using my paper clips to get everything together as you see okay so now we have just the start of our face here just getting a little bit more on the face and you can also start to slightly alter the shape of your head, okay, as you're building. So feel free to slightly bend your paper, curve it up, um, make it feel more natural for you. So I'm now going to make a space for my chin. And I think it's really nice when you're working um, with more rounded shapes. But if you want your um, face to feel more sharp, then make really angular shapes. So I have the shape here. I've cut out two of them. I'm going to put one here for my chin. And I'm also going to use another one here to start my forehead. Okay, so I will install those now. And um, this process requires quite a bit of waiting time, drying time in between. Okay, so patience is key. As I mentioned last time, I'm not very patient of a 
of a maker, so it is hard. Um, I tend to make two or three of these at a time so I can bounce back and forth um, so I don't have to wait for anything because <laughs> I can't wait. All right, now I'm going to add another piece here to my chin. Paper clips, putting that into place. Okay, so so far I have four pieces here. And I'm gonna add two more pieces on my forehead. And I think I'm gonna be kind of set with this brown for a little bit. Um, I think it's nice to work with the same paper for a while as you're working. Um, I think it's helpful to think about where you can put all of that one color. You can always go back and add more of it, but it is nice to start with one color. So I've cut this shape out and they are going to start mapping out the top of my head here. So I'm just going to fix some of these cuts that I've made here to make them just a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna put glue all over here, a little bit on this intersection. Now I'm going to add my paper clips here and um, once we have installed these two pieces then we're going to wait for some dry time. So I'll be back after this clip, uh, after this piece dries for quite a bit. Um, Good to make sure that the glue all goes all the way to the end of where this paper should be. So I'm adding glue here. This is where we're at so far. Third piece here. Okay. All right, so we're gonna stop right here and I will be back with our next layer. Alrighty. So the lighting is changing because it's getting darker out. Um, I did wait quite a bit of time for this paper to dry. Um, so I did wait about 45 minutes just to really make sure that this um, was had a nice sturdy hold. Um, it won't be nearly as necessary to do that with your next couple layers. Um, I just find it important for your, like, your first layer. Um, the strongest paper you're really going to use and how you're going to build up. It's really nice to make sure that this is all nice and dry um, before you continue. So as you see here, I'm just removing all of my paper clips. Also, I want to point out as I was waiting for my stuff to dry, I did wrap up my glue um, just with um, some plastic wrap. So if you have access to plastic wrap or a little plastic baggie, I definitely recommend doing that. Um, to wrap up your t um, your glue. Um, I'm a big saver of glue, right? Pastes are expensive, so try to use them um, logically, we'll say. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go in with my um, next sheet of papers. Um, 
I did work with my thickest paper. It's still not very super thick, right, in comparison to my Bristol, um, but it is um, a thicker paper than the others. I am gonna now use a bit of my craft paper here. So I'm working on a smaller piece. I have my pencil here, so I can use that as I'm working to decide where everything goes and map things out. So I'm using this paper that I did some drawing on, so I just have to be aware of how I'm adding my materials here. So what I want to do now is I want to create under the eyes. And this area here is really going to start to define the face. So it's good to make sure that the shape um, can really reach from the center of your eye to the other side here. You want it to be um, really able to uh, feel like right under, right under your eye um, in the top of your cheek. That's what we're trying to get right now. So I'm gonna put this shape out. And I'm gonna put a little dip here. Um, I like to do this really so my under the eyes are more defined. Um, and you can start to see your face come to life. So how do you glue on the next layer? From here on, I start gluing on my actual sheet of paper that I'm um, adding to my work. I am no longer gluing onto the Bristol unless it's unless it's very necessary. Right now, what I'm going to do is I am adding under eye here. I'm not gluing all the way under. It is really up to you how much you want your papers to um, to be really slick and feel like it's all one solid piece. And if you like the idea of like how your papers can stand up a little bit, it gives you more of um, it gives you a little bit more three dimensions here. You can play around a bit more. You get a little bit more shadows. So I'm gonna install the other piece here. And you're gonna notice as you are doing this, all right, that I already put one on the wrong side. <laughs> so I am noticing that I did flip this the wrong way. So I do have a little bit of green on this eye, but that's okay. For me, that could be a little design, a little tattoo. <laughs> For others of you, that might be a big no-no, so just do what I literally said two seconds ago, not to do, um, in the last clip. Time flies in video making world, so you got the tip and you'll remember it. Hopefully I do. Okay, so. We're going to continue around the eyes. Okay, so this is what I have so far. And now I want to install the above lid. And th these are not necessarily like my eyes right now. This is right below my, um, my eyelid. So this is the top of my cheek. And I'm going to do the eyebrow line right over here. Okay. So I'm remove my cat assistant. Um, so again, I am just putting my paper on top and drawing out how it can be filled in. Okay, so I have this shape here. And this time around, I am going to be fully aware of what page goes where before I glue. And then instead of having a straight bottom like this, I'm going to give myself wowee, a little curve. 
All right, we'll fix those technical difficulties. And we'll okay, <laughs> we're gonna try this again. Um, sorry for my cat that likes to get into everything, unfortunately. Um, when working from home, that is one of the downfalls. So I'm working in another space. Um, I'm hoping the lighting is a little bit better. It's not great, I apologize for that. Um, so I am taking those pieces that I created for above my eyes, right? This is where my eyebrows are gonna rest. I'm just cutting a little bit slight of a curve to this paper, okay? And you know, it is up to me if I wanna include the one that has a little bit of green. Maybe I do wanna do that since I have it on the other side. It might be nice to play around with that pattern. So again, I am using a little bit of my Mod Podge here, adding that directly to the paper. And I'm adding it to either side. And the reason I don't add glue all the way around is because I don't like when my paper is super flat, all right? So when I'm installing this piece here, you'll see that I put down the corner of my eye here. Then you have the ability to play around, as you see here, how much space you wanna give your eye if you wanna give it more of a presence of a lid. I like to move my paper just so there's a bit of a gap. You all can see that. Okay, so you're getting, as you notice it's not directly touching the edge of the inside of that skull there, there's a little bit of it raised up. So I'll do that again. Again, I just go into the corners here. So again, going in one side. So depending on your paper sticking, this might be a time where you need to use some um, blue tape. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit more. So that kind of gap that I'm talking about, right there and there, you can see it there. Okay, so that's gonna make it a little easier to build up the eyes. I'm gonna continue using my craft paper though, right? Cause I like to use one paper at a time and I'm gonna continue with my forehead. So I only need one piece or, you know, it's always good to have two just in case, you know. If you rip a piece, it's good to have two. So I'm cutting myself a kind of long teardropish shape. Okay. So it should be long enough that it goes from the center of your forehead to at least the top of the head that you created here. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. I'm gonna install on one end. So I'm just gonna put a little glue on one side here, right in the center of my forehead. And then again, this depends on who you're creating. Does your person have more of a pronounced brow line? Does it, if so, then you might wanna pull the part of the eyebrow, I mean the head a little bit back so the eyebrow can stand out more. If they have a more prominent uh, um, forehead, you might leave it a little flat. So this really allows for a lot of customization for who you are creating, right? Starting from color. Um, going into shapes and stuff like that. So we, of course, will go over this um, together on Thursday. I will show you some more tips next week when we have a live session together instead of the one-on-one -on -one meetings we usually have. So I hope this is a fun lesson for us all. And I'm going to put this one back here. Okay. So I'm going to glue, and I'm going to include this little green strip I have again because I, I do like the little kind of 
face tattoos that I have on my sculpture now. So if you do like using patterned materials, go for it. If you like um, your person, by all means, does not need to be um, using colors that make sense to that um, to humans. So if you want to create a blue person or a patterned person, make who you want to make. And as I said before, this work can be very political if you choose to make it. However, it does not need to be. And um, I will point out I did in this time, I did glue on the surface rather than gluing on the paper that I was installing. This is because I do want to have a flat back to my head. I do want this completely covered, okay? So I'm gonna use a little bit more of craft, of this craft paper, and then I'm gonna move on to my next sheet of paper. Cut more of it. It's good to know I have these stripes. I'm gonna be more aware of them now as I'm working. And I'm gonna create a little bit more space um, that is gonna fill in this area here. Install that there and put this one over here. And now that I'm looking at this piece and how long I've been doing this video, it might make sense for there to be a part three. <laughs> so for, for part three, um, we will uh, continue to work on more and more layers, okay? So I think it's a good idea to stop around here. Um, and I will show you in the next part how to make all of the really important details like the mouth the nose and your eyes and your ears um, and then after you build those features um, you just have to fill in a bit a little bit more but um, this is a good start to what your head um, should be going towards okay so we will pause here and we will come back for part three um, i will get that to you shortly